Hello there, prospective Year 12 math students. Welcome to our virtual induction day. I'm sorry I can't uh, see you in person today. My name is Mr Dennehy and I'm going to do my best to give you some insight into what studying mathematics A-level at Cooper's um, is like. Now, maths, as I'm sure you know, is a vibrant, creative, exciting subject, uh, which often gets a bit of a bad name. Um, and I really want to show you that today is about uh, what we're going to be studying, what your A-level will be about, is about interesting problems and not just about rules. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is something that you will have touched on at GCSE, but it's something that we really double down on and we spend a lot of time at the start of Year 12 looking at. At the end of this video, I'm also going to talk you through uh, the uh, transition task, the task that any students who do want to take A-level maths uh, in Year 12 next year, that they need to do before um, they come in September. Okay, let's start with our lesson and I'll talk through that at the end. Okay, we're going to be looking today at algebra and functions. Okay, we're going to be looking at how you can use division to simplify some algebraic expressions. Okay. Um, now, the first way you can do this is you can look for common factors, things that are in both. Now, if we look at this fraction we have here, there's an x on the bottom. So the only thing we're going to be able to cancel is some x's. Now, that x to the power of 4 means x times x times x times x. So when we divide by x, we can get rid of one of those four, and it will become three. Okay, let's have a look. So that cancels. And then that x to the power of three means x times x times x. So we can divide one of those x's and just have x to the power of two. And finally, that singular x on the, e on the end, on the six x, that can uh, be divided through. And we ended up with this which is the same as that. Okay, very good. Let's have a look at um, another way of doing this. We can break up the fraction like so. Okay, now, one thing we can see is the left-hand side of that fraction, we've got x's that can cancel, but on the right-hand side, we don't. So maybe we can cancel something else. Maybe it's the numbers we can cancel. Okay, so if we cancel on the left hand, the x's, we just end up with 5x over 2. And on the right hand, we can divide by 2, cancel a 2 out. Sorry, I should have. Okay, very good. Okay, now, for this one, we take a similar technique. It's just a harder example. We split up the fraction. That left hand side we cancelled an x, relatively straightforward. Here on the right hand side we have to, um, we we also cancelled an x, but we can realise that we kind of that we have a minus four there divided by a minus three, so we end up with this final answer. Okay, brilliant. Now, factorization can be really, really important in this, okay? So if we look at something like this, where it's already factorized, it makes sense. That top part, uh, the numerator, means x plus seven, all in a bracket, multiplied by two x minus one. So we can clearly see that we would divide by two x minus one. That seems pretty straightforward. Okay. Now it won't always be the case that it's factorised for you, and if it's not, it can be quite a lot trickier. Oh, looks like we're going to have to do some factorisation here. Take just five seconds to see can you factorise that, the bottom, the denominator. Okie dokie. Should factorise like so. Then we cancel, we end up with our final answer. 
Now in this example, you have to factorize both. Feel free to pause the video and see, can you factorize these? Okay, let's see if you've got the factorization. Very good. Okay, now, at this point, I'm gonna move over to some questions. And what I would like you to do is like, I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at each of the questions before I go through the answers. If you just watch the video, I'll go through the answers very quickly because the video, because I'm leaving, I won't leave the space for you to do the working. You can just pause it. Okay, let's go. Have a go at that question there. Pause the video and have a try. Okay, that should be enough time. Let's have a go. We can see that the first thing that was needed to be done was to factorize the top and factorize the bottom. And from that, we can see there's a common factor of x plus four on the top and on the bottom. And then when we cancel through, we just get four x and x minus four. Okay, let's have a go at another question. I'm gonna skip a question here, jump straight to this one here. Okay, I'm gonna give you some time now to do Question six, and then question seven, if you can. Okay, so pause there and have a go at question six and question seven A. Okay, that should be enough time. Let's have a look at the answers. Uh, but the answers that were the same were these two here. Okay. Then if we look at the answers for part A, Okay, we see that we would have had to cancel an x minus 5. All right, let's have a look here at uh, this next question, part B. Now, one thing I want to talk about is one thing that you might have found a little bit tricky about that previous question in that getting the x minus 5 out is that you have to do a, um, a difference of two squares there. Okay, so that's a difference of two squares. That x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 5. Okay, let's have a look at this final one, question 7. Pause the video there. Can you have a go at that? Okie dokie. Hopefully you've done that. Let's see if you've got the right answer. So first thing you would have to do there is factorise, uh, oh, oh, factorise both the top and the bottom. And then you can see that you can cancel an x plus 3. Okay, brilliant work. Now, let's have a think about what we looked at in our little induction lesson today. We had a look at how you can use division to simplify some expressions, okay? And you often will be looking at common factors, okay? Can you think of a number, like a two, that can factorize in both the top and the bottom? or an x, or a multiple of x even. You could um, have a common factor of x squared. Sometimes, in order to do these questions, in order to simplify these expressions, you'll need to factorise, okay? Sometimes it will be factorised for you, sometimes you have to factorise both the top and the bottom. All right, now the final thing I want to look at is the transition task. Now, as this is the task that you will have to do over the summer. Now, in a normal period of time, um, we would expect this to take between five and 15 hours of, of hard work. And the lower end of that, the five hours, is if you are already strong at all of the topics. Now, what this uh, consists of is a set of examples and a set of questions. And in each case, what you are expected to do is to look through the examples, remind yourself of something at GCFC that is relatively difficult and something that is going to be needed for uh, A-level and then have a go at some other questions. Okay, so you can see expanding brackets and simplifying expressions. We have some examples that you can read through. Some practice questions that we want you to do. There are some extension questions. You don't have to do the extension questions, but you can. And finally, there are some answers. What we we'll want you to do is we we'll want you to mark your work 
and do corrections on any that you got wrong. Okay, now, one thing you might find is if there's a particular topic that you find quite difficult, i.e. you haven't per perfectly perfected it from GCSE, it might take you more time. And that is kind of what this transition task is about. It's trying to make sure that you find those things that you need some extra work on. There's some support here. There's some, there's some FAQs, some questions to help you, some frequently asked questions, some things that will help you. If you are finding that you find something really, really tough, I really would suggest copying out the examples. Okay, Taking the time to recopy the examples that were given can really help you have a good understanding of what you need to do. Finally, what's also talked about in the start of this is the fact that we usually have an assessment on the first lesson when students come back. The idea, that you, the idea being that you come back, you come to your lesson, sorry, your first lesson with your teacher and you will hand in your transition task. Okay, so that will be your first chance to show your teacher what a hard working student you can be because you will hand in a piece of work that shows you've gone through all the questions, you've marked them all and you've done your corrections. On that day, you will have an assessment that will be based on these tasks, on these topics. And this gives us an idea of where you are from day one. And that means we can give you support. Now, I assume that that's how it will be when we start back in September 2020. But as you're all aware, who knows what will be the case when we get there. So as far as I'm aware at the moment, that's what we plan to do. But obviously, events will have to be taken into account. It will be the case that there will be more gaps this year. Okay, We will do our best to bring people up to speed as quickly as possible. But it's really important that we have this transition task and this assessment when we first get back so that we can get a good idea of where your get gaps are and we can help you as much as possible. Okay. So, to briefly talk through what I talked about, the transition task. You will have this PDF be given out to you and it has examples questions, some extension questions and answers. You only have to do the um, normal questions, the practice questions. You don't have to do the extension questions, so you are more than welcome to. You are expected to mark them with the answers that are given and do corrections. And if you are struggling or there's anything you're not sure of, you have to use this front page to get many of the answers that you need. And then on your first day back, we will give you an hour long assessment where we will try and get an idea of how well you have taken in these these topics. And that will help us to do some support, or to give you some support rather, in the early weeks and months of the course, so that you uh, do as well as possible on the course. Okay. Lastly, all I'd like to say is thank you for taking the time to watch this video. It's a real shame that I haven't been able to give you this induction day in person, but I hope it's given you a flavour of our course and some of the interesting things that we do in it. Okay, I hope to see lots of you in September um, for an exciting year with lots of exciting maths. See you later. Goodbye.